is the 98th Colgate Comedy Hour. Starring Donald O'Connor. With his guests, Teddy Lamar, Marilyn Maxwell, Cecil Kellaway, Sidney Miller, Tom DeAndre and Hal March, Scatman Crothers and Phil Garris. Presented... And now, the Colgate Comedy Hour presents highlights in the life of Donald O'Connor. This is the trunk which played an important part in the life of the O'Connor family. Where's Mother O'Connor? Oh, there she is. Go to sleep, Donald. Don't cry. The show's on now. Be a good boy. Don't cry. <laughs> And here he is at the age of 10 in a scene from Sing You Sinners. And say, who's that straight man trotting alongside the horse? Well, believe it or not, it's Bing Crosby. And here he is two years later at the age of 12 in Beaugest, playing Gary Cooper as a boy. Notice the resemblance? Or you don't? Well, neither do I. And here he is at the age of 20 in the army, where he was wounded in the line of duty. <laughs> and here he is at the age of 27, in the forecourt of Grauman's Chinese Theater in Hollywood, as Mother O'Connor helps him put his footprints in the cement. It's a great moment in the life of a star when he's asked to put his footprints. Whoops, did I say footprints? Donald! Wrong end, Donald! Oh, that's better there. Now you see him implanting his footsteps in the cement. A great moment in the theatrical march of time. Time? Did I say time? It is time, Donald. Time for the Colgate Comedy Hour. Go, Donald, go! Donald, hurry, hurry. Oh, you forgot something, Donald. Ah, oh, there, that's better. And now, here he is, the star of our show, Donald O'Connor. Is there a stonemason in the house? <laughs> Boy, that stuff dries fast. Well, I won't go through to make an impression. <laughs> Be great if I have to go through the whole show this way. <laughs> yeah. uh, I took care of that. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to be here this evening. And it's a great honor putting my footprints at the Gromish Chinese Theater. All of so many wonderful things have been happening to me since I've been away, and I want to say, I want... Is he still here? <laughs> Get a load of the ears on that guy, will you? Really, since I saw you last, I had a marvelous vacation in Honolulu, and you know Hawaii did wonders for me, because I became young again. I really did. You don't believe it? There I am in my Hawaiian daidi. <laughs> and I think it's very healthy to go places and see, see things and meet people. Because, you know, they say, the only time you should stay at home is to watch television, because when you're out on your own and sort of lonely, no place to get up and go, it's a wonderful, wonderful feeling when you bump into someone you know. When you're caught in the rain on 4th and Main Street, not in the mood for a show, it's a wonderful, wonderful feeling when you bump into someone you know, no doubt about it. It's a shot in the arm, a three-bell alarm to your heart. It's all oh, such a pleasant surprise, a downright sight of sore eyes. When that someone you see says, gee, I've missed you, it's like a bolt from above. When you bump into someone you know and love.
that someone you see says, gee, I've missed you. It's like a bolt from above. When you bump into someone you know and love. <laughs> <laughs> well, bless my heart, but isn't Cecil Kellaway? How are you? so <laughs> You're a brick of all Ireland, Donald, my boy. Well, from the way that you speak, from the smile on your cheeks, you're the happiest Irishman I've seen in weeks. Weeks? Ha, ha. ha. This has been a whole year of St. Patrick's Day since last I saw you. Aye, that is sad. No, that reminds me. I saw the picture. What picture? A wonderful picture. Call me madam. Oh, you did? Oh, uh, let me tell you. Yes, this tell Ethel Merman. Oh, oh, she's wonderful. Yes, but did you, did you happen to see... Uh, oh, oh, you? Yes. Oh, sure, I saw you there, too. Uh, why? Well, uh, where are you heading? <laughs> I'm on the way to St. Patrick's Pub to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, you but, but St. Patrick's Day is a week away. I know, I know, but there's no harm in rehearsing it. Come along now. All right. <laughs> Do these portals pass the happiest of mortals? Oh, the days of the Carrie dancers and the Knights of Columbus, too. Shall we go? <laughs> <laughs> hey, tell me now, tell me. Yes. Do you, uh, do you uh, still own this place? Ah, that I do, my boy, that I do. Well, how's business? Huh? Fine. Fine. In fact, it's so fine, if it wasn't for one customer, I'd be bankrupt. Yeah, who's that? Me. You. <laughs> <laughs> ah, same old Cecil. <laughs> and the same old Donald. Uh, You're a sight for sore eyes. Come along now. Have a drink. All right, if you insist, I'll have a little half and half. Yeah, half of which and half of what? Half ice and half water. Uh, what's the ice for? That, that's to cool the water. Oh. And what's the water for? That's to melt the ice. Uh, listen, well, holy shepherd, where are you building to? Well, I know there's a joke there, but I haven't found it. <laughs> <laughs> well, come along now. Have a glass of ale. It is good for a cold throat. Yes, but it's bad for a hot head. Ah, I know. Drinking's a curse. Down with it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, oh, come along. What? Now, you know, it reminds me of something. What, what is that? What is it? Your grandfather. My grandfather? Yes, the beer. You know, it reminds me of the time... Is he still alive? My but, grandfather? Yeah, if no, he, if he, uh, he's not alive now, but if he were alive, he'd be the most talked about man in the world. The most talked about man in the world. Why? He'd be 136 years old. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh Mother Riley, she can talk. She fell in the fire and burned her body. Now she has no feathers upon it. She has to wear a wig. Hey! <laughs> hey, doesn't all that ale affect you? No. <clears throat> the gas is a little bit, and so oh, does the color. <clears throat> and I, I drive to stop like I see. <laughs> Donald, for the love of Mike, I've never noticed it before. What's that? You're the spitting image of your grandfather, Patrick O'Connor. I am. Yes, here. Put on this carry. Right. Here, take this Ellis. Well, uh, Patrick! Cecil! Say the word. Let's have a drink. No. <laughs> <laughs> Young fellow like you want to drink. Well, will you join me in a song, then, for St. Patrick's Day? But St. Patrick's Day is a week away. Well, there's no harm in rehearsing for it. Well, <laughs> shall we? Let's. <laughs> To Dublin town, or County Cork, or County Down, or any Irish village by the sea. No, are we going by the bloody stone? And are we sure we're really going? And if we are, we'd better wait and see. Hey, Faith, and are we even kidding to get as far as Erin, where everyone goes to see the Shannon flow? No, we're merrily, 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 merrily on our way to nowhere. In particular, we're merrily, 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 merrily on our way, though the roads are perpendicular. We're always in a hurry, we have no time to stop. We got to get there, we got to get there, but where we got to go? <laughs> Did I tell you of the dreadful experience I had this morning? No, what was it? I had to shoot my dog. Oh, no. Not that lovely little Irish terrier. Yes, the little terrier, I had oh. to shoot him. Was he bad? Well, he wasn't exactly pleased. Oh. <laughs>
much, ladies and gentlemen. That Cecil Kellaway's wonderful, isn't he? He's a, he's a little pixie. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I, I just received a postcard from those two buck privates, DeAndre and March, and I'd like to read it to you. Second now, it says here, Dear Donald, we are on a troop ship somewhere on the high seas. Wish you were here, instead of us. <laughs> you soon, we'll see you soon. Your pals, those two bucks, Tom DeAndre and Hal March. Hi, Hal. Nice cruise, nice. Beautiful voyage. What kind of a boat is this? You heard of those tramp steamers, ain't you? Yeah. This is a bum. <laughs> Must be. It ain't working very steady. I wonder who's driving. Tom, I don't want this aired around, but I ain't a good sailor. I ain't even a good soldier. What you... <laughs> well, we got nothing to worry about. They made us all take them seasick pills, right? Yeah, but will they work? Will they work? Everybody's sick, ain't they? <laughs> Cal, them pills are a waste of time. There's only one thing that'll cure seasickness. What's that? Land. Yeah. <laughs> Plenty of land. Plenty of land. All you can get your feet yeah, on. That'll cure it. Hey, Tom, what do you think they got down the bottom of this boat? Us. That's what they got down in the bottom. <laughs> no, I mean the engines and things. Ain't they lower than us? There's nothing lower than us. <laughs> Nice accommodations they gave us, huh? Beautiful stateroom. Yeah. Get a load of them beds over there. Beds? I thought somebody stole the drawers out of the dresser. <laughs> How do you get in one of them? One of them? I can't get in three of them. <laughs> well, you can get in the top one. Sure I can, but I can fall out, too. How far can you fall? You're 50 feet below sea level now. <laughs> What I'd like to know is who's in them staterooms and beautiful cabins up on the main deck? Those are for the horses. <laughs> the horses? I can't stand the meat they're serving us now. Some chow, huh? Chow. Ch Tom, I went to the library the other night. I want to look up the word chow in the dictionary. What do you think the definition says? What? Chow. A Chinese dog. <laughs> Now I know what the sergeant meant when he said we had a whistle for our supper, huh? Right. <laughs> sure. 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 I know. Down, down supper. Nice chow. And we ain't gonna run out of it. They got a load of it on here. Yeah, I saw him. I saw him loading it. Hey, Tom, how long you figure it takes to load this boat? That depends on what you're putting on. Well, we got 20,000 soldiers aboard. How long you figure it takes to get that many soldiers loaded? About 10 minutes if you got enough glasses. <laughs> Talking about getting loaded, did you cop a gander at the general when he arrived, huh? Oh, what a load he was, five or six gallons anyway. I heard a couple of sailors say they might have to pipe them aboard. Sure. <laughs> well, like I always say, Tom, I say that if... Don't nobody stop me. That's a nice green paint job you got, sir. <laughs> Right out, so I can. <laughs> His seasick pill is working good. Good, very good, yeah. You know why I don't like him, Tom? Why? Because he won't apologize for what he called me. What he called you? He called me a lazy, no good, crummy, gold brickin' bum, is what he called me. What's so bad about that? Nothing, but it was the way he said it. Oh, he read <laughs> Apologize. Well, we got enough on our minds without worrying about him. Yeah, you ain't kidding, Miss Cruz. Beautiful Cruz. Well, I got a load off my mind, Tom. I wrote my mother a letter just before we left. Good. Yeah, she was worried. She wanted to know how things were with me, so I made her feel a little better, you know. What'd you tell her? Well, I told her the food was poisonous. The sergeant tucked us in every night with a bayonet. <laughs> and the only recreation we have is sitting around filing one another's chains off. <laughs> well, if I told her how it really was, she'd worry. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to worry at all. Oh. Did you mail a letter yet? Yeah, I mailed it. It'll never get through to your mother. They're censoring the mail. No kidding. Sure, I sent my mother a letter, but I outsmarted the censors. Yeah? 
I told her we were shipping out, see? Yeah. I told her how many guys we had on the ship, what the name of the ship was, when we were leaving, where we were going, and what time we were going to get there. Well, the census never let that letter get through to your mother. That's why I outsmarted him. What'd you do? I mailed it to my brother. Thank you. <laughs> What do you say, Sarge? Don't nobody stop me. Go back for a second, Sarge. There he goes, the Green Hornet. Sure. <laughs> yeah, the Green He's Hornet. miserable, this guy. Very tough to get along with. Yeah. But I know why he's miserable, Tom. His footlocker was open the other day. I got a load of a picture of his wife. Ooh! <laughs> A mountain goat. A real brute. Yeah. Al, if she was my wife, she'd have to go through channels just to shake hands with me. Me? Sure. Thing. I couldn't stand her. Couldn't stand her. There he is. Hey, Sarge. What? What's going on in there? One of our men is sick, and I'm taking care of him. Who is he? Me! Oh. <laughs> Straighten you right out, Sarge. Boy, the medics got their hands full today. Yeah, they got their hands full of everybody but me. Them guys ain't touching me with the meat hook. They ain't gonna touch me either. No. What do you think happened to me a couple of weeks ago? What? I had a cold in the head, see? Yeah. So I went up to the medics, and I said to this guy, he says, hey, I got a cold in the head. Give me a shot of penicillin. Where do you think the wise guy gave me the shot? Where? In the head. <laughs> Figures. You had an expert, you know. The medics is loaded with experts. Yeah, they don't take anybody, you know. No, you gotta have a special background to get in the medics. One guy snuck through without the right background, and they threw him right out. They had an investigation, found out what the guy did in civilian life. What do you think the guy was in civilian life? What? A doctor. Now, hear this. Now, hear this. All military personnel, this is zero hour. We'll hit the beach in ten minutes. Well, pal, this is it. Pretty grim, Al. I wish they didn't tell us where we were going. Yeah, to make it easier if we didn't know. I've been there before, and I hate it. Me too. I don't like it. I don't want to go to Catalina Island. No, the summer <laughs> season I don't want to go. I don't want to go. Ladies and gentlemen, I've always wanted to do a picture with the lovely young lady I'm about to present. Up till now, this has not been possible, so I decided to do something about it. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring you the very beautiful and talented Miss Marilyn Maxwell. My baby don't care for clothes. My baby don't care for show. My baby just cares for me. My baby don't care for silks and laces. My baby don't care for high tone places. My baby don't care for rings or other expensive things. He's sensible as can be. My baby don't care who knows it. My baby just cares for me. My baby don't care for clothes. My baby don't care for show. My baby just cares for me. My baby don't care for silks and laces. My baby don't care for high tone places. My baby don't care for rings or other expensive things. He's sensible as can be. Baby just cares, 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 cares for me.
all I see for me is misery. I'm out of right to sing those blues. I've got a right to moan. I've got a right to cry down around that river. I know the deep. Got a right to sing the blues. I've got a right to sing the Once upon a time that never happened, in a place that never was, a beautiful princess lay sleeping. <laughs> sleeping under the spell of an evil spirit. Sleep on, sleep on, my <laughs> A spell which would one day be broken by the arrival of Prince Charming. because right here I have a little item that no home should be without. Uh, did I say home? I meant castle. <laughs> no castle should be without. A Prince Charming vacuum cleaner, and I'm here to give you a demonstration. I know very well why you come here. Well, that makes my mission rather simple, then. If you'll just direct me to the lady of the house, I'm sure we can work out something that we could... Lady of the house, did I say? <laughs> I meant castle. <laughs> 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 asleep. Did what? Asleep. Asleep? Well, I'm sorry. I meant to get here yesterday morning, you know. No, she was asleep then, too. Well, I should have gotten here last week, later oh, in the afternoon. She's I... been asleep then, too. She's been asleep for a hundred years. A hundred years? Well, an occasional nap now and then is very refreshing. <laughs> Slumbers on under the spell of my magical powers. Under magical powers? Oh, magical powers. You know, I used to believe in that when I was a kid. I really did. <laughs> I'll never forget the first time. You know, now we kids don't even believe in either. They really don't. Kids don't even believe in either. I'll never forget the first time I saw them. What are you doing? Let me down out of here! Let me down! Let me down! Let me down! We don't have any more, more sky. Let me down. Uh, maybe I'd better come back later. When will the lady of the house, I mean, lady of the castle, be away? <laughs> when you kiss her. When I kiss her? Mm -hmm. uh, just a minute. Just one second. Now, it doesn't say anything about that in the salesman's manual. <laughs> <laughs> all right, if, you, if I have to kiss her, if, it, if I can sell a vacuum cleaner, I'm all right. I I'll, lead I'll you to you. her. You lead me to her. The sleeping beauty. Oh, she is beautiful, isn't she? Yeah. I have to kiss her, huh? Yeah. All right. Oh, I, ca I can't kiss her. <laughs> Okay. It'll sell a vacuum cleaner. At last you've come to me. I've waited so long for you, my beloved Prince Charming. <laughs> you are Prince Charming? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going back to sleep. <laughs> oh, she, she thinks she's having a nightmare. Oh, is that all? Well, lady, I have here what every woman dreams about. Every woman dreams about a Prince Charming vacuum cleaner. Now, with all its accessories, it not only dries your hair, but also butters your toes, answers the telephone, and puts a cat out at night. Oh. <laughs> you speak in a strange tongue. You behave in strange ways. You're rather strange-looking, too. <laughs> Tell me, what sort of a man are you? What sort of a man am I? Well, I'm about five foot eight, and 
Well, I'll tell you. Well, what? The pretty little girl like you wants to know about ugly little old me? Tell me about yourself. Well, there. <laughs> there really isn't very much to say, except... Except that I have here the best little vacuum cleaner on the market. <laughs> now, this is a best vacuum cleaner. It's just great. You know what this vacuum cleaner does? Well, uh, you don't know what it does? Of course she no, doesn't what know. What is vacuum cleaner? You don't She's know what it does. for a hundred years. You don't know what, you don't know what, uh, well, I'll show you then. I'll show you. I'll give you a little demonstration. I have here, I have a mixture of sand, cigar ashes, and mud scraped off the shoes of small boys. Now, I'll put it right <laughs> in the look at my lunch. I've got the wrong one. <laughs> Now, if you'll just show me where the electricity is. What's electricity? You don't know what electricity is either? No. I'm shocked. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, you know, it's, very, it's a very simple answer. You see, it's the stuff that goes through wires, and it, 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 it comes out, it's, it's, uh, well, there was this fellow by the name of Benjamin Franklin who flew a kite, and he, uh, he came, uh, would, would you tell her what it is? The old, the I rely on old-fashioned magic. <laughs> old-fashioned magic. <laughs> stop that, will you? Well, if you don't have any electricity, I guess I can't tell you a vacuum cleaner. I'm leaving. No, please don't go. I'm glad you said that. The <laughs> <laughs> kiss wakens me, and another kiss may free me forever from this evil power. You mean you want me to kiss you again? Please. If I do, will you buy a vacuum cleaner? Oh, yes, yes, anything you say. Oh, this will be the easiest sale I ever made. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? You haven't made the sale yet. <laughs> oh, don't pay any attention to him. Come to me, my prince. I'll come to you. <laughs> Show off. And I shall come to you. Now look, Buster. What? Oh, I'm sorry, I'll be right with you. Look. <laughs> why, don't you, why don't you get lost for a while? I, I, I want to sell a vacuum cleaner. Now I give my right arm for just two minutes alone with it. Anywhere? <clears throat> what do you mean? You should have your two minutes alone, but I should retain control of your right arm. <laughs> Always milder, better taste it. <laughs> uh, I finally got rid of him. Did you hear what he said? He was going to retain control of my right arm. Oh, silly boy. Well, now that we're alone, I... <laughs> Get out of there. I'll tell you what I... Oh! What are you doing? This is second wind. Oh. Mosquitoes in here, I don't know. At last we're alone, my friend. Put your arms around me. I get... Come on. Both arms. Well, I'm trying to get there, but I can't. Both arms. There we are. So, I tell you, believe... <laughs> you know what you're doing to me? I'm trying to make a sale. While the boys back in Peoria think about this. Don't you want to kiss me? Well, of course I do. I get... <laughs> Come on, now, boys. Stop, stop fighting, will you? Come on. Oh, if I only had an orchestra. <laughs> I don't know. Do, don't go back to sleep. Be right back. I'll fix this right now. <coughs> Just stay there a minute. I'll get this all around here. There we are. Okay. Now. Now what? Now I have here the best vacuum cleaner on the market. <laughs> it not only cleans the rubber, it also cleans the Venetian blinds. <laughs> they take care of the upholstery. The spell isn't broken. The spell isn't broken? No. Kiss me again. Nothing. <laughs> Why don't you put some feeling into it? Uh, think of me as you would of a vacuum cleaner. Well... <laughs> well, why didn't you say so? <laughs> Nice, Miss Charming. Good night. Say, man, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just uh, taking inventory. Oh, what? My city. Yeah. Don't those lights do something to you out there? No, they just add to the summer heat. To me, they're a glittering necklace around the throat of Manhattan. Look, you see that big mansion over there on Riverside Drive? Which one? That big one. That's the French Embassy. For sure, for sure. Say, what goes on over there? 
Well, tonight they're throwing a continental ball. Man, that's one ball we ain't gonna never catch. Oh, I don't know. This morning I received a personal invitation, an engraved invitation from the ambassador himself. Man, I'd sure like to know who molds your dreams. Well, I do. I build them out of unfulfilled wishes. Just keep on dreaming. You'll see what dreams can do. Dreams weave the magic when everything falls through with one dream. Miracles come in view Through dreaming You'll find that somewhere Someone waits just for you His Excellency, the Continental Ambassador of Hobohemia. Beautiful music, dangerous rhythm. It has a passion, the Continental, an invitation to moonlight and romance. It's quite the fashion, the Continental. Because you tell of your love while you dance.
for tops? Ladies and gentlemen, I won't bring the fellas out. I can't kiss them. <laughs> I want to say now, ladies and gentlemen, I think Eddie Cantor is going to be with us next week. So until we meet again, thank you for coming. You've been a swell audience. See you real soon. Good night. Thanks. The 98th Colgate Comedy Hour has been presented by Colgate Dental Cream. Palmolive Brushless Shaving Cream. Fab, the new wash day sadness. And Palmolive Soap. Company invites you to watch Mr. and Mrs. North every week and the big payoff every day. Be sure and tune in again next week at the same time when the Colgate Comedy Hour will star Eddie Cantor with his guests George Jessel, Connie Russell, Billy Daniels, Harry Ruby, and Danny Richards Jr. Two weeks from tonight, the Colgate Comedy Hour's 100th anniversary, starring in a special anniversary performance, Abbott and Costello, Eddie Cantor, Bob Hope, and Donald O'Connor. The Colgate Comedy Hour has been selected to be shown to our armed forces overseas. Portions of this program were on film. Now, this is Hal Sawyer saying good night on the 98th performance of the Colgate Comedy Hour, which has been presented by the Colgate Pomola Feet Company, makers of quality products since 1806.